guys, Kevin Ryan for Team Wolf, Season 5, Episode 12, Damn NATO Memori. And um, I was definitely looking forward to this episode. Last week's premiere, mid-season premiere, was very strong. The season in general has been very strong. And this might have been the first episode that I wasn't exactly satisfied by. I gotta tell you guys that right now. I didn't. I really did not love this episode. I still thought this was a very strong episode, and there were definitely some very strong things in it. But I really felt there were some very rushed um, plot developments in this episode that really could have been saved for later episodes. Now, some stuff they're handling very well, but some stuff, I, the other stuff, I thought was very, very rushed. And Team Wolf's always done this. They rush things, and uh, they kind of end plots before they start. And I really thought the Season one's going to do that, but they did do it. And hopefully they do fix that, because I really want this season to be as good as the first half is. But based on these two episodes, I do feel the first half of the season has been a lot stronger than what we're getting in the second half. But let's just get into this episode, um, because there was some really great stuff here. And... Right away, we start off with Clark. She's found Hayden on patrol. Um, she's basically found Hayden, and Hayden is riding shotgun. And uh, we can see that Clark is being very overprotective um, because, of course, you know, they, which is completely justified, the fact that she had no idea where Hayden was for the past three days. But, of course, you know, she has no idea that Hayden really is this chimera. And when Hayden says that, she, you know, you when when uh, Clark says she might be dead, she actually is. And, of course, you know, Hayden checks to stop checking a call and basically takes a look inside of a van that was left running in a parking lot. And Hayden waits in the car. I mean, Clark, that was not Hayden. Hayden waits in the car, but she has a lot of look. She has a look of fear on her face. And basically, Clark follows and opens gate into the building, makes her way down a few flight of stairs, calling out hello. And a voice says, help me, and a flashlight lays on the ground. And uh, basically, meanwhile, outside, Liam surprises Hayden, who tells him that she ignored his calls because he left her for dead. He insists that she was dead, and in the building, Clark comes across a security guard who has been mauled. He tells her that whatever did, it is still there, um, and as strange new beasts emerge, and I thought this was a very thrilling scene, very good way to start the episode. He chases after Clark, but manages to make it out of the building before she does. It sets its sights on Liam and Hayden. They begin to run away through the woods. They reach a cliff and are both forced to jump across in this terrible slow motion. I don't know why they made this slow motion, but... I thought it was kind of ridiculous that they did that, but basically, Hayden makes it, but Liam has a little trouble. The beast is followed, and Liam asks Hayden if she trusts him. She says no, but he grabs her hand and pulls her off the cliff with him, and it's just great that these two have scenes together. Like I said, these two actors have such great chemistry. I love Hayden and uh, Liam's scenes, and I like that already they are rekindling stuff. Their stuff, I'm fine with. They really have no blood to boil, you know? There's nothing they really need to get over. The fact that they're already together, you know, they're, the fact they're already like in scene scare and where they get in this episode that i'm perfectly fine with because like i said they really had no amends to make because what amends to make oh hayden died there's really no other amends to make except for what's going on with theo which of course liam doesn't really know about so liam is woken up by hayden slapping him but he can't move his legs because his back is broken and hayden says she's leaving to find clark and make sure she's okay and Liam asked her she's just going to leave, and she reminds him of what he did. He asked to save her, and she said that it was Theo. So definitely, he knows something is going on with Hayden. He doesn't know what it is, but he knows that something's going on there. Now, let me just say the Theo scenes in this episode, I thought were quite rushed, definitely. Some of it was very good, but some of it isn't exactly working for me. Especially going with the first scene here. We see Theo and Tracy, and Tracy just kills her father um you know finishes off her father and uh he offers to help but she declines and basically tracy has now killed her father um which is pretty crazy that she did that of course but you know she's now killed him and what i don't like about this is that we these you know the group of the chimeras they don't really have characters other than the ones that we really know like hayden and Corey, things like that these chimeras don't really have characters, they just seem like Liam, you know, Theo's group, so they're really not all that menacing to me because they're just violent, they don't really have a character to them. And, uh, Parison shows Scott the footage of the Beast, and he says that it is the last Chimera, and basically, that would make a lot of sense. You know, get the most powerful Chimera, and the last one out. And Scott goes on investigation with Parrish, and they find Mercury, which is associated with Chimera, and Styles wakes up in the hospital room to see that Stalinsky's father, you know, Stalinsky's bed is empty, and... 
He starts making his way around the hospital, look for him, and finds him in the morgue, looking at a body by the name of Donovan Donati. He walks in, they share a look, and they don't know if Donovan's there or not, and obviously they know that Donovan is probably a part of this group. You know, um, he now, he, you know, he knows what's going on with Donovan, and of course, you know, Stalinsky didn't know what was going on with Donovan. He didn't know that Styles killed him, and he just gives him this look, and you know, oh, he knows that Styles killed Donovan. Which, let me say, this was a very strong scene. I definitely really like this. So... Chris then unlocks the safe, holding a particular flower. We get a lot with Chris Arjun in this episode, which I kind of like because we haven't seen Chris Arjun all season. But it almost feels like he's been a huge part of the season because he has a lot to do in this episode. He unlocks the safe, holding a flower, and it sounds as if um, something is going to go down. You know, definitely you can tell that this, this flower definitely symbolizes something. You don't know what it is, but... Styles and Stalinsky discuss the murder he committed, and uh, Stalinsky believes that it was self-defense, and I believe that too. I mean, Styles did it because of the fact that, you know, what Donovan was going to do to him, and if he didn't kill, I've said it before, if Styles not killed Donovan, Donovan would have killed Styles, and he says he would do anything to protect him, and just a very great scene, shows how much Stalinsky cares about Styles, and I just really like that scene. So, Sty so uh, Styles then asks about Kira, and um, Stalinsky says that it was a mistake. And Scott overhears them talking, and the sheriff, and basically Stalinsky is going to give giving his son advice on how to deal with taking a life. He tells them that saving a life can help him, and he says that his head knows the only crime he committed, but his heart still thinks that it was murder. And he tells him to get his heart to catch up to his head. And like I said, I mean Scott and Styles never really have a conversation about this because I understand that Scott kind of is understanding, you know, what Styles did, but this kind of felt a bit far-fetched to me. Like, Scott would just think from this one conversation that Stalinsky is right. I get that, Sty you know, Scott obviously cares about Stalinsky and sees Stalinsky really as, like, a second father to him. I understand that. But just the fact that he would, you know, suddenly change his morals just from what Stalinsky is saying... It didn't really make sense to me. I would have wanted Scott and Styles to have a full-on conversation about this, and that really never happens in this episode. And I'll get to what does happen. Um, but Styles says that he feels like he lost something in life, and he feels like he can't get it back, which, of course, is his bond with Scott. That's what he's talking about, and... Stalinsky tells him that he won't get back entirely, but he has to forgive himself, and Stalinsky says if he can't forgive himself, he needs to forgive someone who needs it, someone like Scott, and I really love that. So Theo then meets with Josh, another one of his chimera, and he tells him that he needs to feel something better and changes him up using jumper cables, and Liam watches on, Theo sees him, Liam leaves, Theo laughs in enjoyment after watching his chimera react to the shock, and... That was, like, torture porn. I mean, that scene was kind of pointless. I mean, I understand that Liam's trying to get, like, as much information on Theo as he can. I understand that to see, like, what exactly they're doing. But that just kind of felt like torture porn. Really, it did. I mean, it just seemed like they showed that just so we could see someone being shocked. It really didn't do anything for me. So then we get Scott. He visits Malia. This was an especially strong scene. I really love this. And she tells him that she can't help him right now. She says there's something that's going to happen. She's going to do something and he won't like it. And he asks if that's why he hears two heartbeats inside and why hers is being so fast. She tells him to go home and she just can't help him right now. Mainly because of what's going on between her and Brayden, which we can definitely tell the Desert Wolf is happening here. She and Brayden are torturing a man for information on the Desert Wolf. He says that she's not traveling alone. They find out that D-In is being held hostage by the Desert Wolf, and then they just drop it. They don't go back to this in this episode, which I thought was really weird. I mean, why would you just introduce a plot point only to just abandon it? That didn't really make a lot of sense to me. I mean... I don't understand, you know, you should just stay on a plot point and not just abandon it. It didn't make sense, it was stupid, and I want to see more of this definitely. I honestly want to see, like, where they got to this point, why they're doing this. We didn't really get the the how. You know, we saw, you know, the, the how they did this, but I need to know why they're doing this. You know, why exactly, where they find this man, what information does he have, things like that. I, I want to see more of them, we didn't. So, Liam and Mason go over the fact that Theo is building a pack and are approached by a student who asks if they are volunteering for the library cleanup, and Mason and um, that student are catching up the cleanup. Now, this is the student that Mason had a crush on, and 
Mason seems a little confused because he's this student is acting very creepy, and Mason has no idea what to say to his crush, but it doesn't seem his crush it doesn't stop his crush from asking him out. And Styles is pounding away on Stalinsky's laptop. He tries to get it back, but Styles pulls away and finds that there was something missing in the footage. He uncovers the footage of the new beast running out of the building during its attack, and uh, he definitely can tell there's something going on here. So Lydia wakes up to what appears to be a room in an asylum and makes her way towards and opens the door. She turns back only to see her body laying still in the bed. She continues to walk the hallways hearing banging noises. When she opens the door, she finds the shower bath area. Out of the tub comes a hand with black oil. Now, that's finally we get to see that hand that we've been seeing in the posters. You know, we do see that here. Um, and the body climbs from the tub and crawls towards her. It's actually Meredith who tells her to not be afraid and... I like that Lydia is seeing Meredith. You know, we don't know if she's actually there or if it is all in Lydia's head. That was very well done. My only thing is I didn't really feel like it needed to be in this episode. I feel like you could have cut out everything to have with Lydia in this episode, and this would have been a really good episode because we would have been able to focus more on some of the other plot points. You know, the fact this episode had four plot lines I think really was a detriment to the episode from making it a really strong one to a kind of forgettable one. So, meanwhile, Hayne approaches Theo at the station and tells him that what she saw was exactly what she says um, in the painting, what's, you know, what it says in the painting, and he tells her not to worry and that what she saw won't kill them unless they stick together. And Theo asks her if she wants to tell him anything else, and she says no. She tries to walk away. He grabs her and tells her that she can't hide anything from him, and, um... Clearly, he can tell that there's something going on with her that she's just not telling him, and Scott's wound still won't heal. He's approached by Styles, and Styles asks him if he heard about the murder over at the communication center, and asks if Scott wanted to help him, and Scott agrees, and Styles shows him the footage. Now, this I like. I like that they're just wanting to help each other out, not really knowing if they can, but just they know that they have to work together. They're both involved. They need to work together. I like seeing that. Styles says that two people and three people come out, and Scott realizes that there must be two entrances. So, they know that, and Mason and Liam are then arguing over when Mason is going to get the scoop on Theo's pack of chimeras. Liam elects to speak to Corey instead, and Theo's in the hallways and tells Corey he doesn't have to be nice anymore, and he doesn't have to worry about, um, you know, being nice. He's now part of this pack, get aggressive, but... Corey says that he doesn't want to hurt Mason or Liam, and Theo says that they won't, and I like this. I like that Corey doesn't want to hurt them, but to me, this seemed more like something that Hayden would get. You know, why not give Hayden this whole, oh, you want to do this, this besides this buddy-buddy thing with Theo? I'm not really feeling this Theo-Hayden dynamic. It's kind of come out of nowhere, and I don't know why specifically, and I get that Hayden has something that Theo wants. I get that. But I just don't know why exactly Hayden and Theo, I just, I don't really buy this partnership. I just don't. I've got to tell you guys that. So, in fact, he says that they're going to protect them. Theo then lightly threatens Corey and tells him he needs to go with him unless he wants to die again. So, we don't know what Corey's going to do. We'll have to see. Styles and Scott are back as a team once more investigating the communication center scene. And Scott is finding it hard to lift one of the file cabinets without his powers. But Styles lends him a helping hand because, you know, Scott doesn't have his powers right now. They find an underground area with a ladder leading down. And Liam realizes that Corey left with Theo and Mason tells him that he needs to tell Scott everything. Thing. And Liam isn't sure that Scott will forgive him, but Mason tells him to start with sorry. And I like this, you know, scene here. You know, Liam doesn't really know if he's ready, if Scott's ready to, if they're ready to move past that, because of course Liam tried to kill him, and he doesn't really know if they can get past that. But I like that Mason's just telling him, hey, say sorry, it's the best thing to do. I definitely like seeing that here. So, Lydia's still in a comatose state, and the woman tending her tells her that she knows when a patient is pretending. She's pretty sure that Lydia is pretending. She threatens to keep her there for the rest of her life, and Meredith tells her that she has to wake up or else she won't be there to help her friends and they will all die. And Meredith tells her that she learned to fight and it matters. She also tells her that she will teach her how to use her voice as a weapon, and... I feel like she's already done that. I feel like that's one of the things that Lydia's already done. I mean, when you hear that sound, that means there's chaos, and... I guess this is like the canary cry. I mean, that's kind of what they made this seem like. Not to connect to Arrow, but that's what this sounds like to me, that they're going to try to make this into the canary cry. Um, we know, of course, though, that Lydia does have major fighting skills. We saw in the first episode. And if Meredith is truly going to be her trainer, that could definitely be very interesting. 
But is Meredith even real? I mean, Meredith supposedly, I believe, committed suicide in season three, if I'm not sure. I believe I believe she did. And uh, Styles and Scott are in the underground tunnel following a trail of Mercury to lead. Uh, and Damn Nato, Memorai is written on the floor. But before they can find out, they are attacked by Tracy. And Scott and Styles have to battle Tracy, but they're both powerless. They can't really do anything. And however, something happens, and Scott gangs his powers back just out of nowhere. He gets, I have no idea how he did it but somehow scott just got his powers back made no sense but whatever i mean i guess he got his powers back i just i, I don't get it but he did whatever just that was weird honestly i don't really complain too much about team wolf but that was just i don't understand how i don't know why it just seemingly he just got his powers back out of nowhere i i really don't understand it it doesn't make sense to me and i just i don't get it i i don't really think that made sense at all so yeah i i don't get that but anyway, um, we see the Theo steps with Cory and another member of his Chimera pack. Theo tells them that they are now on the same side. He says, in the day, they will go to school like normal kids, but at night, they will be fighting for their lives. And no shit, Liam. That's, I mean, no shit, Theo. That's what I thought was going to happen. So Liam tries to find Scott when he's approached by Hayden. And right away, we see that it looks like Liam and Hayden might already be back on. And she says that she is there because he is an ass if he tried to kill Scott in order to save her. He says yes, and Hayden says it's pretty screwed up. She tells him that ever since she came back, nothing felt right except for him. She tells him that he's the only thing that feels right. And she asks how he feels about her. And just when she walks away, he takes her hand and kisses her passionately. And I'm very confused as to what the hell is going on Hayden's storyline. On one hand, it seems like she's very different with Theo, acting different. Um, you know, in that pack, she's darker, she's uh, wants to kill. But here, now it seems like she wants to be back with Liam. So is she just pretending with Theo? Is she pretending like she's darker and she's really not? Because that's really interesting, and I really like this scene, obviously. I like that Hay Hayden and Liam are back together because they're cute as hell, honestly. I love them as a couple. Um, but I don't know if, you know, I don't know why Hayden just... You know, I can't really tell what they're trying to go with their storyline. I can't really tell, guys. And if you guys can, maybe I'm just dumbfounded, but... I'm very confused by, is she just pretending, or is this real? Maybe there's just not something I'm not getting, but to me, it seems like that's real, but then when now she's with Liam, I'm pretty sure that she's pretending. I'm not really sure, though. What do you guys think? I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. So Scott's back to saving Styles, and Styles tells him that damnato memori means the condemnation of um, memory, and he says that the Dread Doctors have resurrected a new creature instead of creating one, which definitely makes sense why they would do that, because the fact that a new creature is out there, why not resurrect it? They have the, you know, the, they have the power to do that, and, uh, if the Dread Doctors are just gonna keep sending them Chimeras, which I'm pretty sure this is the last one, um, then we'll have to see what happens, but Kristen pays a visit to Gerard, out of all people. Gerard is back and gives him the flower, which happens to be a cure, and it was great to see Gerard again. We haven't seen Gerard in so long. It was awesome to see him here, and right away, Gerard is cured. He tells him of the creatures who live to end life, and the name is the Beast of Givondon, and uh, basically, this beast is very dangerous. We don't know what the, this beast is going to do, but clearly Gerard knows a lot, and I really feel because Deaton is in such a bad situation right now where he's kidnapped, Gerard is definitely going to be the Deaton right now. He's going to explain things to Scott. He's going to help him out, and I like that Gerard is on Scott's side. I definitely like seeing that. I think Gerard was a good villain in Season 2, but I loved in Season 3 when he tried to help out Scott. One of the strongest episodes still, I think, of this entire show is when he tells him a Derek and Deucalion's past. Definitely, that was very strong, and uh, that's no exception here. I think Gerard seems... He's a great actor. I love seeing him again. It's awesome to see um, that character back. So Scott and Styles right away are rekindling their friendship, and I, I don't buy it. I don't buy it, guys. I just don't. They didn't talk about... All they talked about is, oh, we gotta save our other friends, and we can't have this going on anymore. I, fine, whatever, but I really... I just wanted more. We've had two episodes now where Scott and Styles um, are feuding, and honestly... 
that feud was pointless. Let's just face it. Now that they're back together so quickly, now that they're back to being best friends, that feud was pointless completely. It feels completely pointless to me, and I was really upset because I was really digging this storyline, and then they just axed it, and it really just did not work for me. If they would have done something different, that would have been fine, but just the fact that, you know, these two are suddenly buddy-buddy again just didn't really make sense here. So then we see Kira... Her and her mother are in the desert looking for skinwalkers, and I don't know why this scene was in here. This was completely out of place, in my opinion. Definitely should have started next week's episode, because next week's episode is all about Kira. The ground begins to break, and the skinwalkers rise up, peering directly at Kira and her mother. Kira is told to take out her sword, and that's how the episode ends. So overall, I thought this was a really overstuffed episode. I just felt there was too much going on. I really did. I mean, between... Everything was going on with Scott and Styles, and then Layden, and then, of course, Lydia, which I thought could have been completely cut out of the episode. Chris Argent, yes, that was important when we found out about Gerard. Definitely, I think that was important. But Kira, that did not need to be here. Lydia did not need to be here, definitely. But let's talk a little bit about what's going on here. Let's talk about Hayden, because like I said, I can't figure out what's going on here. Is she pretending, or is she simply actually dark like is she pretending for Liam or is she pretending for Theo one hand something's just not connecting here and I can't figure out what's going on but we'll have to see because definitely something's not connecting and I need to know what's really she's doing here because I, I can't figure it out I, I can't guys I, I just can't <laughs> honestly I'm being honest with you I can't figure that out um we'll have to see what happens with that but um as far as uh, this whole thing with Gerard goes, what is going on with the Beast? What does Gerard know about the Beast? He clearly knows a lot about it, and that's something I've always loved about Gerard, is that he knows a lot of mythology, and it's been confirmed that Crystal Reed is coming back to the show playing a new character, and I heard that the character she's going to play is apparently the first, like, um, I think they said wolf ever, I have something like that. But I think that somehow that connects to the Beast of Gevadon. Of course, the Beast of Gevadon is new, but you have to think that there's been beasts before, definitely. That's not just because that Beast is new doesn't mean there aren't other ones like it. So we'll have to see what happens there. Uh, Corey. Is Corey going to get darker, or is he not going to listen to Theo? From where this is going, I see a lot of people turn against Theo. I see um, Hayden turn against Theo. I see Corey turn against Theo. And that doesn't necessarily make me happy because Theo is supposed to be this really powerful presence. And here he just seemed like some guy that liked to torture people. It didn't really seem like he was that much of a villain here. It seemed like anything the Dread Doctors were the villain. And the last episode showed that Theo's the one controlling all this. And I really didn't see that here. So definitely had some narrative issues here. Liam and Scott is one of the best things that's being written right now. You know, Liam not wanting Scott to forgive him. I think it's very interesting. I'm interested in seeing really where they're going to go with that. Uh, will Scott choose to forgive Liam? You know, is will Liam go to Scott? Is he going to listen to Mason's advice? We'll have to see what happens there. It definitely is going to be very interesting. Uh, Meredith. Is Meredith real? I think Lydia's just picturing her, but is Meredith the one that trains Lydia? I mean, we know someone clearly does it, because like I said, Lydia is a fighting badass, so somebody has to get her to that point, and Meredith, I think, is the person to do that. You know, if, if anyone, I think it's going to be Meredith. Um, Malia... I want to find out what's going on with Malia here in the Desert Wolf. We got one scene with Brayden, and that clearly is not enough. I need a lot more. I need to know why the Desert Wolf... I need to know what they want from this man, what the information I'm going to get out of him is. I need to know more what's going on there, and we just didn't get enough. Um, but over, guys, I really did enjoy this episode. I just felt it was definitely a big step back from the past few that we've had. We had some really good ones. This was definitely a step back. Let me know what you guys saw this episode overall, and I will see you guys in the next year, which will be for the season series premiere shadow hunters which i don't know if this is gonna work guys i'm gonna tell you i'm hearing not so great things about it but it will be my next review we'll see what happens if i like it i'll stick with it if i don't i'm just gonna quit i just am i'm, I'm not gonna continue a show that's stupid i'm just i'm not doing that but i will see you guys next year which will be for that and i will see you guys um for my review of shadow hunters and i will see you guys for that okay bye